I'm Jill and I'm going to talk to you today about a really important sound in the uh, English language. And that sound, um, if you can get it correct and really start to pay attention to this sound, it can really, really start to transform your ability to speak English with a, 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 a clear accent and also to understand other people when they are speaking. Let me show you what I mean. This is the sound, we refer to it as a schwa sound. In the English language, it's pronounced uh, a very short sound, uh, like up and funny. Here's a list of some examples. Now what you'll notice in this list is that there are many different spellings for this sound, uh. For example, this is the word about. The sound uh is right here, used with an A, They're spelled with an A. Come, like come here. Now that uh sound is, is spelled with an O. Again here, complete. This is the uh sound. Uh. It is written two different ways. If you're gonna look in the dictionary for this sound, or if you're looking up a word in the dictionary, you'll always see these lines. And these lines means it's the pronunciation of the word. It usually comes in the beginning of the definition in the dictionary. So sometimes you'll see this sound written like this, and sometimes you'll see it like this. But we always call the sound schwa. That's not as important. What is important is that you start to recognize the sound in the English words. About, come, complete. Here's a longer word that I want you to think about for a second. This has two A's, an E and an I. Academic academic. The sound uh is right here. Academic. Academic. We'll come back to this in a little bit when we talk a little bit more about stressed syllables in English. Love. Uh. Love. Sun. And like we said before, up. And funny. Uh. So what can be tricky about this sound, obviously, is that it doesn't exist in Arabic or many other languages. Um, so you have to practice it. If this isn't in your language, you have to practice this sound. It's a short sound. And another thing that makes this difficult is the spelling is different in all of these different words. So it's hard to predict when you will have that sound. But it is important to learn it. Let me give you a few more examples and then we'll practice some words together. Okay, we're back. So what I have behind me <clears throat> is a list of some of English's most common words and then some small phrases that we can practice them in. Now, what makes the schwa sound super important is that we use it in connected speech. Here's what I mean. For example, the word a or a. Uh. It was a mistake. That's the example. When I say this word alone, I say a uh, or a. It was a mistake. A. Uh. Here's the pronunciation of that word. Here's another example. The or the, sometimes people say. The is the more common way we say it. Under the table. You can hear a uh, in that part. This is how we write it phonetically. Here's a really good example where the word, the sounds of the word actually change when you use it in a sentence. This word is the word or. Pass or fail. I did not say pass or fail. I said pass or fail. So I'm joining the words, I'm connecting the words, and it ends up being a lot shorter in the middle, this it doesn't sound pass or fail, pass or fail. So this changes from or to er. And we can write it like this, with a schwa and an r sound. Do you see what I mean? This is why it becomes very important. This is why this sound is the secret in the English language pronunciation. Because if you can understand how we start to connect these sounds and these words together, 
and um, then you'll actually s start to sound more and more like a native English speaker. Let's keep going. And, hot and cold. It changed from and to in, like this, a very short sound. Of, out of bread, out of bread. Many times people will even say, uh, only here. Out of uh, bread, I'm out of bread. So it might only be like this, out of bread, out of bread. Two, gone to lunch, gone to lunch, ta. It changes from two to ta, gone to lunch. At, <clears throat> she's at home. So it went from at to it, a very short, quick sound, because it's not an important word in the terms of understanding what you're saying in the sentence. She's at home. She's at home. Sometimes with this T in the, in the final position of a word like this, we don't even say it, or it's called unreleased. Check out the other video I have about the ways to pronounce the letter T in American English, and that could, we'll talk more and more about this. Okay, him. Tell him. Tell him. So I'm only saying him. Her. Tell her. So we're not really pronouncing this first sound. Tell her. So it sounds more like this with the schwa and an R. And the last one here is them. We'll just use this say. Tell them. Tell them. That's what we would say. It sounds exactly the same as this one. Tell him. Tell him. Tell them. Tell them. They sound exactly the same. You'll see the pronunciation here is exactly the same. Okay, you guys, here's three more examples that I think are really important to the English language. These are um, some other function words in English. Can, do, and have. And when you use them in a phrase or a sentence, or in this case we have two questions, you'll see that how these words actually change um, when you put it into um, a, longer, uh, a longer phrase or a sentence. So, can is the individual word alone, can. But when you put it in this word, can you see? It sounds like kin. Can you see? It changes. Because it's not an important word in English. When it's the important word, like see, then we don't change this, how that word sounds. It's called a function word. Function words are the, the words in an English sentence that carry the meaning. This one does not carry too much meaning. It's important and we need to have it in the sentence, but we don't stress it, okay? So we, can you see? You can hear how I'm saying it's stronger. Can you see? Do, this is another one. We pronounce this word do, but when I say it in a question, what do you want? What do you want? This sounds like duh, what do you want? And these words kind of come together. But the words that are important in that question stay strong and clear. Have, should have gone, should have gone. This sounds like if, should have, I should have gone. Again, the words that are important like gone, want, and see, those are the key words, the important words in the, in the sentences or in the questions. And so we don't shorten those at all, but we do shorten some of the other function words that don't carry a lot of meaning. Now, as you're learning English and you're practicing your pronunciation, listening for these things in spoken English is really, really important. And when you start to hear it more, you'll also start to be able to use it more. So practice with some of these phrases or some of these right here. And I think if you start paying attention to how people are speaking and how they're shortening their sentences, this will become much easier for you. And this is very important in you guys um, understanding, but also when you're speaking. Because if you're going to pronounce each one of these words, it will be very difficult for people to understand your English. They have to really concentrate to understand your English. But if you can start to condense or shorten some of these 
these, um, these smaller words that don't carry meaning, then your English will sound, your English accent will sound more clear for people talking to you and listening to you. And this is my secret. This one sound is so, so very important. If you can get it and you can listen to it and you can practice it, I think that your English will become so much more clear. That sound. Behind me I have a few lists of words and we're going to go over each of those words and I want you guys to decide where you hear the schwa sound, the uh sound. Because the first step to pronouncing this sound better in American English um, is to recognize the sound. The first step is to recognize the sound. Then when you can start to use that sound you will become even more familiar with it and even better then you will start to hear it better in your own um, when you're listening to English. Alright let's take a look. So we have ten, tan, ton. Now we're listening for the uh sound. Ten, tan, ton. Right here. Uh, ton. Bead, bid, bed, and bud. Where do you hear that sound? The uh sound. Bud, right? Good. Next, we have luck, like, and look. All very similar sounding words. These are called minimal pairs, right? Luck, like, and look. Here's that uh sound. So first start to recognize the sound within a word and then start practicing longer words that have the schwa sound in them, and many of them do in English. After that, start to practice longer phrases and then sentences that contain the schwa sound. If you tune into our uh, podcasts and videos on YouTube, you'll get much more practice. And even better, the best way to learn American English pronunciation would be to join our classes. So if you go to voxeem.com slash courses to focus on the pronunciation of the individual sounds of American English and really start to get you feeling more confident with your English. I hope you join us. Our classes are every month. You come twice a week. We join um, together on the computer. So if you have a computer, you have internet, there's no reason why you can't have great sounding English. Thanks, you guys. Have a great day, and I'll see you soon. If you have questions or you want to email me, go to jill at voxeem.com. And check out anything we have to offer on our website.